Welcome back to Board Game Breakdown. I'm Christopher Solomon here with our next video and today we are looking at Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. So this is marketed as the Terraforming Mars card game uh, so it is slightly different from the standard Terraforming Mars. Today we're going to be concentrating on the solo mode um, but I will give you a couple bits of information about the multiplayer mode. Real quick before we go any further if you do not have 30 minutes or so to watch a board game video, please click this link here for our new burst videos, which this one will be on Terraforming Mars, but it will be about three minutes or less. So if you want a quicker uh, version, uh, abbreviated version, hit that up. But if you want to see all the details, keep watching this. So in Terraforming Mars, uh, you're going to be working on Terraforming Mars, which means you're going to be raising this oxygen temperature track, flipping over ocean tiles uh, to basically try to make Mars habitable for people. And how do you do that? You're going to have a hand of cards and you're going to be playing them down and basically building your engine that will hopefully allow you to produce more resources over on this board, which you can dump into Mars and reach the uh, final goal of making it habitable for those uh, that want to go live there. Uh, so again, this is going to be basically about the solo mode. So we'll have a quick setup tutorial. We will go over the five actions that you can take and how the action selection works. And then we'll play a round of the solo and a little how to play section. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get all of our new videos, these uh, standard length ones as well as our burst videos uh, so you are up to date whenever we come out with new ones. Also please check out the website boardgamebreakdown.com. Uh, you can find all of our stuff there. Um, we do a lot of text reviews on all these games that we're doing videos on so if you'd rather read um, your review or see pictures and stuff that way and you don't really have time to watch the video go on over there and check out that. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram, Mastodon, any other social media uh, sites. So hit us up there and leave us some comments. So with that, let's get started on Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition. All right, so let's do the setup of the solo mode, uh, which is pretty quick, um, either in the solo mode or the multiplayer mode. Um, setup is very fast, so we don't want to take too much time on this. Uh, you'll see two main boards out here. We've got the Mars board here, and we have your individual uh, corporation board over there. So let's start with the Mars board. You're going to have two clear cubes here, and you're going to place them on the first spot here of the temperature track on the left and the oxygen track on the right. You're also going to have nine ocean tiles. They are double-sided. There's a blue ocean side and then this uh, brownish barren side. So you're going to put the ocean side down on all nine of them, mix them up and just place them out there. And then you'll see two cubes over here, whichever color you're playing as. And today we're playing as green. You will put on the five spot right there. And then the other cube, you just grab any color. Um, and this is basically like your opponent um, or it, it kind of keeps track of the rounds. Uh, you'll place there on number one because there is a hard stop at 25 rounds and the solo game is over. This track running around the outside here is your terraforming rating or TR, and that's going to um, rise and increase when certain objectives are met. Uh, basically, that's just victory points. They translate to victory points at the end of the game. So I might use VP or TR interchangeably throughout the video. All right, you also have your corporation board down here so you're going to have a lot of your green cubes or whatever color you're playing with left and what you're going to do is you're going to set one of each of these on the zero slot here of all these different resources this top one yellow is for your mc um, which i think might be mars credits that's probably wrong i'm gonna mega credits not mars mega credits uh 
whatever, regardless. They're your money that you're going to use to put cards out. Uh, this blue track here is for when you do production, if you get to draw extra cards. You have a heat track where you can produce heat. You have a plant track to produce plants. And then you have these two resources down here that don't really produce um, a resource, but instead they, uh, as they increase, they're going to allow you to spend less mega credits to put cards out. And uh, there's two of those. And on the left side, you've got this brown that is representing steel and the black is titanium. So we're actually going to move those uh, on here in just a second uh, when we pull our corporation card but let's keep setting up. Uh, you're also going to get five of the action cards and they have a backing that matches the color. Uh, the other side looks like this. So you want to grab your five and just place them over here. Uh, you're going to put out your tray that has uh, these forest victory point tokens. There's ones and there's fives. And then you should have a tray here of um, all these different cubes that are basically going to uh, go here and act uh, as the resources. Uh, the small ones are worth one. The silver grayish ones are worth five. The big yellow gold ones are worth ten. You also have your deck of your cards over here. Uh, they're a little off camera. You don't really need to see them. Um, you will deal yourself four. So we have four here. And then over here on the right side, you're going to put out the phase tiles. So one, two, three, four, five. And on the flip side, uh, they match the phase that's on the cards. Um, so we're going to use that to track which actions we're taking. And then you want to take just a dummy set of cards um, to act as the uh, opponent's hand um, as far as their actions so i just grabbed the yellow ones because they match the yellow cube but i mean you could get any five um, the opponent is not really going to be scoring points but they are going to be placing actions lastly you do have a whole deck of corporation cards uh, so you want to shuffle these up and you'll draw one so grab one of these so let's see we are Hillion, Hellion, Hellion, whatever. Um, so let's talk about this real quick. Um, up here is how many MC you're going to start with. So we're going to start with 28. So down here in this block, we want to put 28. So we can do 10, 20, 25, 26, 27. 28. All right. So we took care of that. Um, in the middle here, it's typically something else that um, either you'll start with or um, a production track you increase. So it starts, it says you start with three heat production as well as a 28 MC. So to start with three heat production, we're going to come over here to our heat track and we're going to move this up three, one, two, three, which means when we produce, uh, which you'll see when we start talking about the actions, we'll be able to produce three heat from the very beginning. And then there's typically something here on the corporation card um, that gives us some sort of effect throughout the game. Um, and it will tell you over here uh, what phases this is affected by. Um, so you'll see like production is affected by phase four, which that's the production tile. Uh, but this effect we're going to be able to take... Um, we're going to be able to use in phases one through three. Um, and what it says is you may use heat as MC, you may not use MC as heat. So what does that mean? Uh, if we have heat here and we're low on money, we could basically use heat in place of MC, but we cannot do the reverse. You cannot use MC in place of heat. So that's our little corporation car. We can put that over to the side because uh, we just basically need to remember that. We have our four cards here. Um, so that's our starting deck. We'll talk about that more in the next section when we start talking about actions. Um, so we'll put those there and we have our five action cards. So, oh, one more thing. Uh, you'll see I have some extra cubes up here. Sometimes we'll need those to place on cards. Um, also, if you get your um, any of your resources up past the nine track, um, 
or the nine value, you can place that there for 10 and then start this over. And then maybe uh, if you got so many, you'd need to move that up to 20. So you're able to use these extra uh, cubes to do that in case you start getting a whole lot of resources. Um, so that's it for setup. Um, what we'll do next is jump into going over what these five action cards are all about. So real quick, we're going to talk about how action selection and terraforming Mars Ares Exposition works, as well as quickly look at the five actions that we can take. I think this will help streamline the next section where we actually play through a couple of rounds of the solo game. So the way action selection is going to work in a game is you have these five action cards and you're going to draw one out of your hand and you're going to place it down face down like that and in a normal game with like multiplayer um, other people would use their action cards and they would put theirs down in the solo game you're going to just take your dummy deck and make sure it's shuffled up and you're going to take theirs and you're going to take the top one and put it down and then you're going to flip them so we got development we have construction and these tiles up here You'll see that the doors match so we're going to flip over development and we're going to flip over construction to signify that those are the actions we're taking this phase or this round um, these each are phases so you start at the top and you start with development and so in a multiplayer game you would both you and whoever your opponents are would both simultaneously um, do the development action if they wanted to on the card, you will see that there is two different sections. There's always a top section here for the ability, and this would trigger and the person who selected the card plus everyone else would do this portion. And then this bonus section gives a bonus to the player who actually selected this. So if this is the selection that we would make and it was a multiplayer game, then everyone would be able to play one green project card but then i would be able to pay three mega credits less for the card i'm playing this phase once everyone resolves this you go down to the next phase and everybody does that with the bonus going to the person who picked the card once all phases that have been flipped over have been triggered then you select a new action card from your deck and the only real rule is you cannot play this one again on the next round. So we'd have to choose something else. And so maybe we choose this and then you pick this one back up. You close these doors. For the um, bot, you just take the next one and put it down. And then you flip them over. So we have research. We have development. So then we do that and that. And again, you work your way down and you keep going around and around like that. Once the bot uses all of their cards up, uh, there's a few things that happen on the board, but we'll discuss that on the next section when we get into the how to play. So let's look at each of these um, actions. And I'll say um, while I'm getting my card straight here that um, the bot does not actually take actions, uh, so it won't do any sorts of bonuses or anything like that. It's basically just there to trigger a second phase uh, for you so that you're always able to do two different actions. All right, so first up we have our development um, card. So these are nice and color-coded with which cards um, or actions you're going to take. So you see that this one is green and that matches up with, this is our hand, uh, these green cards. So it's nice because when you're taking the green action, these are going to be the main things you're paying attention to. So real quick, I'm going to read this one again. So the action uh, ability again is each player may play one green project card. And then the bonus, if you did select it, is you get to pay three less. So when you're doing that, you get to look at your card. So maybe we want to play this card. Up here in the top left is the uh, amount of MC that it costs. 
And then sometimes there are different requirements. Um, so I'll show you this one. So this, let me try to focus it for you. All right, so it costs 18, but then you'll see there's a little requirement here and it says down there next to the check mark requires red oxygen or higher. So if you look down here at the oxygen, we're not yet in the red. So I would not be able to play that yet. So if we go back to this car, which I can play, um, it would cost 10 MC for me to place that into my tableau, but because I selected this and I get to pay three less, it would only cost me seven. So I could put that down there and then I would pay five, six, seven. I won't actually pay those, um, but you'd put those in the bank and that would be the end of that phase. All right, so we'll pick this up, pick this up. So let's look at the second phase or the second action. This one is the construction action. So you'll see that this is dual colored, blue and red, um, because you're able to use this to play blue or red cards. So the ability is each player may play one blue card or one red card. So much like, put the wrong deck there. Um, so instead of playing greens, you can play reds and blues. Again, you're going to look for the cost up here and any requirements listed there in order to play them. Now, the bonus for this one is not related to a discount. So you'll see that the bonus, once you, oops, sorry, hit the tripod. Um, once you play a blue card or red card, your bonus is you can either draw an additional card or you can play an additional blue card or red card. Um, but you do have to have the cost um, and the resources to play that additional card. It's not free or anything like that. Um, so I could pay the MC and I could put a red or a blue card into my tableau. All right, so third is action. So there's two different types of actions. Um, there are action effects that are on cards and then there are standard actions that are displayed down here on the bottom of your board so we'll talk about actions on cards first and i don't think any of my cards uh, yeah these don't have any actions but let me grab a couple that do so here's one so you'll see down at the bottom that it says it's got this little emblem and it happens in phase three. Um, so action is phase three or action three. And it says action, add an animal to this card. So if that were in my tableau and we picked um, action as my um, action, I guess, um, then I could trigger this now. Um, that action does not trigger when this card comes out. It doesn't trigger at any point until this is played. So add an animal to this card. So I could take one of my little extra things and add that. And why would I want to do that? Uh, well, it says at the end of the game, you get one VP per animal on this card. So that would be one point. I could do more if I want to, and I eventually trigger the action. Now the bonus is you may activate one action on an additional in additional time. Um, so if I had other cards that had actions, I could trigger one of those, or I could even do this again, because normally you can only trigger an action card once. So I could do that again and stick another animal on that. Now we can also trigger standard actions. Standard actions, you can do as many as you want to, as long as you have the necessary resources to pay. So I'm gonna pull another board over here. Um, so you can see, and down here are the reminders of what these cost. So these are ways to basically raise the oxygen, raise the temperature, or flip ocean tiles. And you'll see a cost here. So some of them cost mega credits, so 20 mega credits here to raise an oxygen one level, as well as getting a forest VP tile, which I'll show you in a minute. Or you could pay 14 mega credits to raise the temperature level. Alternatively, you could pay 15 mega credits and flip an ocean tile. Then you have these two in the middle here that instead of using mega credits, they use other types of resources. You could pay eight plants and get a forest VP tile and raise the oxygen one level, or you could pay eight heat 
and you could raise the temperature one level. So again, if we were taking this action, um, and let's just pretend that some of these were down here, like on this heat. Or actually, let's put them on the plant so I can show you a victory or a force tile. So I could say, well, I want to do this and pay eight to so five, six, seven, eight, put those in the bank, and I could raise the oxygen level one, which would also raise my uh, TR up one, and then I would get one of these forest victory points. So these are ones at the end of the game. Uh, there's also fives if you got five of those you could change them out uh, if I had enough resources I could continue to do these standard um, actions here and manipulate and terraform Mars as I needed to uh, until I ran out of resources all right fourth we have production so this is going to be your main way of gaining new resources over here on this board. So I'm going to read the ability here. Each player gains heat, plants, and draws cards according to their production. They also gain MC equal to their production plus TR. And then the bonus, if you play this, you actually get four more mega credits. So what does all that mean? So first, we're going to produce and get our mega credits. So it said um, equal to their production plus TR. So you're going to look over here. I'm actually producing zero mega credits at the moment, but if we pretended that that was up there, you would get four plus wherever your TR is, which is six. So that's 10 plus the four I got here for having the bonus. So I would get 14 mega credits there. Then I work my way down. I'm not producing any cards. So I skip that. I am producing three heat, so I could take three of these little guys if I can get them out of this. One, two, three. So I can use those, and I produce zero plants. And then remember, these two do not produce anything down here. Um, these might get uh, increased depending on what your cards are. This is steel, this is titanium, but they work as um, something that helps you spend less mega credits as you're putting cards out. So obviously, as you do more of the terraforming, so the oxygen or the temperature or changing over the uh, flipping the oxygen tile, I mean the ocean tiles, your TR is going to rise, which in turn, when you produce, you're going to get more mega credits, which should allow you to do more terraforming and put out more cards. So um, in my experience, um, you start being able to move up the terraforming tracks. Um, really quickly near the end of the game. It's a little slow at the beginning because you're only producing, you know, sub 10 uh, mega credits each production, but eventually you're going to be producing 30 uh, to 40 mega credits, uh, which is a pretty nice amount. All right, one more action here. We have the research action. So this is your way of getting more cards. So let me grab this. And show you this. So it says all players draw two cards and keep one. Bonus, draw an additional three and keep one additional card. So basically, if you played this, you can draw five cards and keep two. So you could put that down. And over on the deck, you would just take out one, two, three, four, five. I would look at them. Da, 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 and I would say, I want these two and put them in my hand. And put those on the discard pile. So that's your main way of um, getting more cards. Real quick, I will show you another board again. And at the top, there is a little reminder here of what each action does. And I like that uh, instead of using like research, um, it says draw. So it's a little more handy in remembering. So play green, play blue or red, actions, produce, draw. So. I like that little touch there um, where they didn't feel the need to use the fancy scientific names uh, that aren't very intuitive if you have not played the game. So that's it for the action selection. Um, that's it for um, basically all five actions or phases you can take. So now let's jump in and play a couple rounds of the solo mode.
All right, welcome back, and let's knock out a couple rounds of play here for the solo game so you can see how it works. <clears throat> um, so before we get started, how does the end game come about? So you'll see that the little opponent cube is here on one. Uh, we're going to play five rounds. So basically once all five cards of their actions have been played, we'll move this down. So that's one round, two round, three round, four round. On the fifth round, so that being the last round, we're actually going to be able to take their hand, flip it over, and we're going to be able to control the order those five actions come out on. So for the first four rounds, it's just going to be totally random. We'll shuffle the cards up. Uh, but that fifth round, you do have some control. So what do you have to have done by the time those five rounds are done? Well, you have to fully terraform Mars which includes getting the oxygen level all the way up to the top. I'm sorry, that's the oxygen side. The temperature side all the way up to the top and have all nine ocean tiles flipped. So if you don't do those three things before the end of the fifth round, you lose. If you do those things, then you basically count up how many victory points you have uh, between the TR track and your um, extra victory points on your cards and your forest tiles over here and that's your winning score and you're kind of trying to get the best score each time <clears throat> now there are a couple ways to um, change the difficulty um, which we'll talk about once the first five cards have been played uh, we're going to look at this playing on the easiest setting uh, but there are two other settings you could use all right so um, to get started, we basically just take the first card here, place it there, ready to flip over, and then we're going to choose ours. Um, I did reshuffle uh, from the setup, so we have four new cards. So I think I want to play Power Grid here. Uh, you'll see that it costs eight, but if I do pick the development, then that will only cost me five because I get a bonus of three. And this is going to allow me to produce one MC per lightning bolt icon I have and this one counts so you see that sometimes there's little tags over here and those are going to affect how other cards play sometimes um, so I'll just move this up slightly so we know that that's what we're doing um, and then we'll come over here and we'll flip development and then we'll flip the bots card production and we'll start at the top of the tiles over here so first we're going to do development so we'll put this card down here. Again, remember it's eight, but I get to minus three uh, for my bonus. So I will have to pay five, so throw that there. And then because I have a lightning bolt, uh, I wanna move this up one. So I start producing one MC every production. Um, now the one thing I will mention is that means that every time I play a card with a lightning bolt, I need to remember to move this up one um, to keep track of that. So um, that's a little difficult to remember once you get a lot of cards out. It would be nice if there was some other mechanism to help with that, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. All right, so that's my um, turn with development. Obviously the bot doesn't do anything, so we come down here to production. So on production, we're going to produce the MC first, which is equal to our TR, which is five, plus any production, which is one. So I'm going to get six TR, or I mean six MC, so there's five. I get no cards. I get three heat, one, two, three. I get no plants. I do not get the bonus because that was the bot's um, phase choice all right so that's it for that we flip those back over move that there move this here now one thing you might notice is that the bot is never going to reshuffle their cards within the first or like within the play of five it's so you'll you'll always be aware like okay in the next four turns now production will never come up on the bot side um, so unlike a multiplayer game where uh, yeah, production couldn't come up two times in a row, but your opponent could play production like every other time if they wanted to. Um, so there's not that. Um, so we're going to keep development pushed up here for a second so we know that we can't do it again. And we're going to look here. Um, so I have these two. So I'll just play this red one 
Um, it kind of gets me a point at the end of the game. It also lets me go ahead and draw a card. So I'll push this up and pull this down. Come over here and flip this. Then we'll go ahead and flip the bot. And it's an action, so we'll flip that over there. All right, so construction, play a blue or a red card. So I'll throw this red card down. Boom, it cost me seven, five, six, seven. Uh, the action is draw a card. So I'll come over here from the deck, draw a new card. Got a blue card, Olympus Conference. Put that in my hand. And then I can use this bonus, which is draw a card or play an additional blue card or red card. Um, so... I do the blue card I just drew. I could play um, if I wanted to, but it doesn't really. Um, well, let's just do it. So, here I'll show it to you. So, it costs 15. It's going to give me a point at the end of the game, but the effect is when I play one of these little science icon, I guess, including this one, I get to draw a card. So, I'll play this and draw an additional card and then every time we play one of these um, then we get an additional card um, so let's just do that let me put the blue here so I'll have greens blues reds um, all right so that was 15 so I'll turn in 20 get back five um, I get to draw the card for playing that science so I got this terraforming Ganymede this is really good because it lets me um, for all these Saturn um, icons I have in my tableau, I get to raise my TR uh, one step. So it's not decent right now, but if I can build that up, then it will be. Um, all right, so that's that. And then for the action, um, I have no actions on any of my cards, so I can't do that, but I could look down here at my standard actions, um, but I don't really have anything there I can do because I would need eight um, heat. Um, or eight plants, and definitely I don't have the mega credits. So that's going to be that. All right, going back to my actions. So I think I want to. Um, we'll produce. We need some money and stuff. So put that like that. And we know he's not going to produce, or she's not going to produce, whatever you want to think of the bot as. All right, so first up, we could play a blue or red card. I have some. I have two. Uh, here's my hand. I have two, but I don't have near enough mega credits for those. So I'm basically not going to take that and just skip it. I don't get to do the bonus, um, but I do come down here and I get to do the production. So we're still on five, six. And then I get plus four, so that's 10 mega credits. I get three of these. Ah, one, two, three. I still don't get any of those. So that was basically my production, and that was our turn. So you'll see that here at the beginning, it is a little slow to get your engine going, but that's probably pretty normal with most engine building games. Um, so let's do research so we can try to get some more cards that we might be able to play here. Um, flip that over. And he also chose research. So in a situation like this, um, we're not going to do that twice. Uh, you just um, evaluate that action one time. So we'll do this, which says basically because it's our bonus, we get to do five cards. So one, two, three, four, five, and we get to draw two of them or keep two of them. So we got a whole lot of red cards here. Um, we got one of these that needs uh, oxygen all the way up to yellow. It's definitely not going to happen anytime soon. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll definitely keep this because I think we could play that on the next turn, maybe. And um, we'll keep this one. All right, so the others go into the discard pile. We'll add those to our stack here. And that was that whole turn. Let's flip this back over. And I think he has one more card left. 
which I'm pretty sure is development because he hasn't played that yet. Um, we're going to do construction because I want to get that red card out that we just got. So let's flip that over. And yep, development. So boom. Uh, so I have one green card, but you'll see that it has a requirement up here of the two ocean tiles. It says requires two ocean tiles to be flipped. We have no ocean tiles flipped, so we can't do that. So we'll skip development and we'll go right down here to construction. So I want to play atmosphere filtering. So this only costs six MC. Um, it does have a requirement. We need two of the science icons in our tableau, but you'll see we have one there and one there. So we fulfill that. So I'm going to go and stick that there and I'm going to pay the six. And what does it say? raise oxygen one step so we would raise oxygen one step we would also get an additional tr because remember you get to raise this for every time you either go up on the oxygen i mean oxygen or temperature or you flip one of those so we could play an additional red or blue card but i have none that i can afford um, so we will go straight to this bonus which is draw an additional card and I got this subterranean reservoir, which is pretty nice because it lets me flip an ocean tile. All right, so the bot is done with their cards. So what happens now? So at the end of the round, you're going to just shuffle their cards back up. You're going to put the dummy hand back up there. Then you're going to move the round token up one. Because remember, once it goes through five rounds, you're done. And then this is where the um, difficulty setting comes in. On novice, you're going to move the temperature up to one, two. And you're going to move the oxygen up to one, two. So in effect, that's kind of helping you um, meet the criteria you need um, before the end of the game. Um, because like in a multiplayer game, Everyone is working on the same map, so you have multiple people raising oxygen. Why is it that every time I say oxygen, I point to the temperature? But you got multi, multiple people raising all these things and meeting these requirements. So in this way, it's kind of like the bot has raised it at the end of each turn. Um, you don't get to raise your TR because of those. Um, the bot doesn't get anything for it. It's just a way to help you out. Uh, if you wanted to play on one difficulty down, you would only raise them one spot each round. And if you didn't want any help, you could leave them at zero. <clears throat> and then you would really have a tough go at it. At least I would. Um, so one thing I would say is be real careful when you're moving these. Um, unlike these boards that have this little cutout, uh, so your cubes kind of stay in there, uh, these tend to kind of move around a lot, which um, I wish they had little divots like this to kind of keep them in, but maybe that would just gonna cost them too much. I don't know. They had enough money to make this little design around the edge, so I think that would have been a lot better, but whatever. Um, just be careful as you're moving them. And so on the next round, we would do the same thing, flip over a card, do that, move on and on and on. And like I said, once you get to, so that's round two, three, four, five. So here in the fifth round, if we were that far ahead, you could then basically take their, the bots cards and stick them out here and you would get to control um, what happens. So maybe on this first round, you're like, okay, um, I really need to just go ahead and get a production done. So you could put that out there and then you could choose, you know, your action you would do action and production but once the bot chose that that would go away just like normal and you would have these to choose from but it's just a way to kind of help control a little more about um, what's going on there at the very end of the game um, because most of my games um, solo mode even on the easiest um, I've lost um, because it's pretty tough to get all three requirements or I have just barely gotten by uh, by the skin of my teeth there at the very end, mostly due to helping um, myself to uh, what order the bots cards come out in. So that's it. Hopefully this video has given you a little more insight into Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. 
Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below in the YouTube uh, comment section. Please make sure to subscribe so you check out all of our new videos that are coming out. Please go to the website, boardgamebreakdown.com for links to other videos. And also we have text versions of most of the games we review uh, video wise. So if you like to read um, your reviews and how to plays instead of watch them, go there and check that out. Find us on Instagram, Mastodon, any of the social networking sites and hit us up there. Again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.